Today's video is dedicated to my grandmother. I am also sharing some projects I've seen recently that haven't been seen on the channel, some plans for the future, channel updates, a variety of things. Stay tuned. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina. This is Lifting Pins and Needles, a channel all about sewing, limitless sewing. Welcome back if you're always stopping by and if you're a long-term member of this community. Lately, in the last couple of days, I've had a huge influx of new subscribers and I'm so grateful for that. Thank you so much for joining me. If you're brand new to the channel, here you'll find two to three weekly sewing videos and all of them have a lot of practical things that you can take away for your own sewing. If you just stumbled upon this video and you enjoy what you see, you find valuable content for your sewing, consider subscribing, tapping on that bell so you get notified when a new video goes live. Before I hop into sharing some sewing plans and the unseen projects I've sewn that I've promised, I want to share other news, other things that if you're interested in me beyond the sewing content that I bring you, I hope you will keep watching this little segment. I mentioned I was dedicating this video to my mother's mum, my grandmother. Now something happened early this week that was expected and it is that my grandmother passed away. 91 years old, her health had been fragile for a long time mainly in the last two years, but within the last two months had been gone downhill really fast. She was not in great condition and she needed to rest and that happened early this week. So it's a bit hard to talk about her, I keep tearing up, you know, and I don't want to do that on camera. <laughs> she was a lovely lady, she was 91 years old, she came from the generation where everyone used to sew. She was a seamstress, she had a singer machine, those old treadle ones. And I tried to learn how to use it several times during my teens. I just couldn't get the rhythm right on that pedal. And she tried to teach me when I was about 20. I'd lost a lot of weight for health reasons. And I wanted to alter some clothes. I took them to her house and tried to <laughs> take in the side seams. And I was not able to do that myself. And she helped me. She did it, you know, with her machine that she knew inside out. Her hospitality in her home every time I visited was amazing. And it's just, she was just a very lovely lady. This is really when being far away from your family, and I mean really far, I can't go there and support my mom and my family through this, is really hard. But, you know, we've been in touch and, you know, they seem to be coping really well. Um, she was expected to pass away for a long time, but she just kept fighting, you know, she was a fighter. So I'm dedicating this video to her. Her name was Elsa, the same as my mum's name. I'll put a picture here so you can see when she used to be young, you know, with husband. And I think it's my aunt there on the picture. Lovely lady who dressed in colors just like me. So that is what I wanted to say about her. Very big influence in my sewing life as well, you know. Now, one good news that I wanted to share with you. Now, there is a big website where I post pattern reviews. When I put a video, I usually write a pattern review on patternreview.com. That's the name of the website. It's a big website, big community, and I've been a member since last year. I participated in some of their contests. Really fun and useful website to find information about patterns you're planning to make because you'll usually find good reviews, really honest reviews from people that have already made them. So I'm quite active there. If I made the Presto tunic, for example, what I'm wearing now, you will find the review that I've written there very detailed. And they got in touch with me a few weeks ago asking me if I would like to be featured as a member in Focus. And of course I said yes. I answered the interview that is about my life and my sewing background. And they put together such a lovely blog post and sent it out on their newsletter just a few days ago. And I think because of that, I've had a huge influx of new subscribers because of course I mentioned my YouTube channel and how that is an integral part of my sewing life at this stage of my life where I'm not able to work as a midwife. So if you're interested to read, you can read that. I'll put that down in the description box for you to have a read. And if you came from there, from reading that member in focus, Welcome to this channel and I hope you enjoy what you see. I also want to take a moment and say a huge, huge thank you to all the lovely ladies that have joined me on my Patreon page. I set this up over a month ago with really realistic expectations, you know, because it does take a financial commitment to be there. So I'm very grateful for those of you who took the plunge and joined me there and it's been a really nice experience to have interaction with you in an almost daily basis. I'm quite active there, maybe too active. <laughs> 
you let me know if you're watching um, but basically I've been sharing a lot more there than I can share here on the channel uh, so along extra bonus footage from some of the videos and you know it's just been a really really nice experience for me and so all the support received through the patreon page is going to a savings account that I am working really hard in able to purchase a new computer. The computer I have is five years old, it's a Lenovo, it is not a good computer and the process of editing takes longer than it should. The process of rendering takes six hours. It's just making a barrier to what I do and you know, if I have a new computer, I will have a much better quality of life, <laughs> meaning I will have more time to sew produce the content and not spend hours upon hours upon hours editing which is very frustrating but part of it part of having a youtube channel and producing the content to the level that i'm happy to share it with you you know thank you so much for your support myra jane jan pauline wendy cw pan suzanne black bran kat liz chris polly joyce bonnie georgia Rhonda. Jillian, Crystal, Lorianne Payne, Laura, Meg, Vignette, Francis, Sandra, and Christina. So thank you so much to all of you. Not all the ladies wanted to be mentioned. I did ask individually and some preferred to stay anonymous and that is absolutely fine. I have added one more benefit to Tulip Saffron and Orchid supporters. So if you're interested to know about that, I will link down below my Patreon page if you want to have a look. You don't have to commit to anything, but if you have no idea what I'm talking about, you can go and have a look at my Patreon page. Thank you. I want to share with you some of my sewing plans, only some of them, and they will extend towards December. Now, I will be traveling to Chile December the 1st, and I will be returning home January the 19th. It's sort of six to seven weeks, and I'm going to be working really hard this month to have uh, content in advance I will continue working over there at my parents I have a sewing machine and a serger and I always travel with my cutting mat and rotary cutter and basic basic supplies that I need um, so I can still keep making and producing videos at a smaller scale I'm just giving you a heads up that from now until mid-January I will probably be just having twice weekly videos because that is all I can do <laughs> as a one-woman team that does it all I really can't do any more than that for this period of time but then coming back into 2020 I will be full-on back to three times a week and I know my channel is going to suffer financially for that for this period but you know I need to go visit my family and spend time with them and so I'm willing to take that you know <laughs> So what plans do I have and what you'll see from now, November, December sort of thing. I'm working on a coat pattern test at Love Notions. It's a super cool coat. It's called Octave Coat and I'll put a line drawing here. I have been authorized to share this before its release, you know, and I will be making the one with a short collar. There's one with a hood and there's a belt option or a button closure option. It's got these really cool pockets and I'm going to be making it in this red fabric now it's looking really really blood red there on the screen but it's a more darker red and this is some sort of it's like a wool blend sort of twill sort of thing it's it's not heavyweight I would say it's medium weight but totally appropriate and it's the only fabric I could find here in Brazil like I'm not going to find like boiled wool and even if I found it, I would never wear it. Like I would never wear that coat and I always want to make things I can wear, you know. And I'm, I'm going to be making it fully lined and I have this satin chamois. The fabric actually has no stretch. I'm working with a woven and I'm actually working on this right now. I'm working on the muslin and I'm excited. I'm not sure when this pattern will be released. Um, but I'm excited to have a red coat. I haven't had one since I was a child. I think that was the last time I had a red coat, you know. <laughs> now during the month of October, I shared Hudson pants I made for my son and myself. For my son, they were a huge success. For me, they were a huge fail. <laughs> but I will fix those. I will add a yoke on the top and lengthen that rise so that they can be wearable. I just haven't gotten around to unpicking everything I did there. But I mentioned in that video that I wanted to try some joggers from another pattern company that specialize in active wear and that is Green Style Creations. If you look at their website, you will see a lot of active wear. They specialize in that. 
and I'm gonna be making my son the iron joggers. I'll put a line drawing here so you can see. I wanna make him a long pair, traditional pair, and I also want to make him a pair of shorts because that's also included in the pattern. So I have this black activewear fabric that I found here. It's polyamide with like, I can't remember the composition, but it feels really similar to the joggers I already made him and the joggers I made myself. Really nice activewear fabric, wicking, fresh, very good quality, very expensive. <laughs> so I have, um, I don't, can't remember how much I have here, but it's enough for my son's iron joggers. And for his iron jogger shorts, I found this denim look jersey. It looks like blue denim and on the other side, it actually looks like it too. But it's it's got stretch both ways. It's a very nice fabric, very soft. And I have made him a pair of black ones in the past. I think last year, just with a clone pattern, just, you know, they don't fit anymore. <laughs> so um, that is something I'm gonna make sooner rather than later because he's really needing these clothes. Those are the boring fabrics. They'll just go with everything, you know. And for myself, I want to make the Brazil joggers. And it's sort of like an equivalent to the iron joggers for men, but for women. They have very similar style lines. See, they also come in shorts version. But I'm interested in a cropped one, the ones that reach your calf. That is the best length for me. I can't deal with full length anything. It's just too hot, you know. And I'll be using the same black fabric that I'm using for my sons. I have enough here for both. And I found this other fabric, activewear fabric, that's grey. It's sort of petrol colour, bluish grey. And it's quite thick, like it, it's really good. It's really stretchy, really good. And those horizontal texture stripes are going to bother me a bit, but I'm just going to have to cope with that. I really can't use the fabric with those texture stripes going down because the stretch is less this way than that way. So I love the fabric, I love the color. I'm sure I'm gonna love a pair of joggers in this color. They'll go with a lot of things. Um, and these are just, you know, comfy type, you know, um, clothes I'm not gonna wear out, you know, my life other than for exercising. Because I don't believe in wearing active wear to the supermarket or, you know, I, I think active wear should just be worn when you're doing active things. <laughs> That's my thought. So those are the ones I have for that. And I'm excited because these patterns have zippers and I have won the tape that my friend Carla sent me. Never used it before and I'm excited to try that to put those welt sort of zipper thingies that there is in this pattern. So that's gonna be fun. Now another plan I have, and I have this uh, sweater knit. It's got this print on it. It's very drapey, I would say it's a lightweight sweater knit, but perfect for the cardigan I'm planning because it needs to drape really nice due to the design. And I can't share anything else than that. I can't really say what cardigan it is or the name or anything like that, but I'm letting you know I'm gonna make a cardigan and it's gonna be with this fabric and it's so nice. And it's the only sweater knit I have in my stash. It's the only one I have left. The other one, I used it to make the Cape Cod capelet from each to stitch that you would have seen in the previous video. Those were the only ones I had. <laughs> I brought them from Chile. And yeah, I'm gonna be making a cardigan with that one. I have two patterns here, big four patterns, simplicity patterns. And I'm going to be making these both, probably one in November, one in December, I'm not sure the order. I have put a poll up on the Patreon page so the ladies there can help me decide which one to make first. <laughs> So I can't decide and I haven't decided on the fabric yet, but I'm going to show you what they are so you know that they're coming on the channel. Uh, Simplicity 8959, I'll put a picture somewhere because you won't really see it. This is a Mimi G pattern and it's a vest with a notched collar and super cute. I mean, I love vests. I love making anything sleeveless and if this one is supposed to be sleeveless, <laughs> it's a win because I don't have to adapt anything, you know? And the skirt, I like Vue D. I think Vue D is the, is the shorter skirt. So that is the option that I like and I'm super excited to make this. And then the other one is Simplicity 8604. This pattern, I'm not sure what the system is, why it says threads there. I think threads is a magazine, a sewing magazine. It says threads there, but it's Simplicity 8604 and it's a blazer. There's several views here, A, B, C and D. And the views that I like are view C mainly, the one with the peplum, the one shown on the cover. 
and I also like view B which is just like a simple line like the neckline is quite simple and I think those simple necklines like that are really flattering when you've got a larger bust so I'm excited to try this pattern as well although for these two I haven't decided on fabric <laughs> it'll probably be not worn not winter fabric because it's just not practical for me you know it'll probably be linen I'll probably be making these in linen yeah probably I just need to choose the color I do have a little stash there of solids and I have another of prints linen prints so I'm excited about that so those are just some of the plans of course there'll be other things that will pop up you know I have a leaf lining for me is really good because it takes away the anxiety of not knowing what my next video is going to be you know my sewing has changed dramatically since I started a YouTube channel before starting a YouTube channel I had no plans I just sew whatever I want whenever I want and I wasn't sharing it anywhere it wasn't being scrutinized the quality of the sewing you know although I've always taken care of my sewing I think I take even more care now that I'm showing everything to you in detail so yeah I need to know what to make I need to plan ahead and I've been doing that <laughs> Yeah, it's a bit of work okay so I have some makes to show you so months ago I made the Isidro top from each to stitch I believe it was in April I love that pattern and since then I made it into a dress I have already shown that dress in another roundup of makes you know I've never made a video about lengthening it because it's so simple and I always knew this was gonna be a repeat it's such a nice design for a neat top the shaping is amazing and for this one, I sew a size 10 around here, then a 12 at the waist, and then I make it a 14 when I lengthen it into a dress, just to make sure that the full hip has enough ease, because the top is designed to hit the high hip, so it's a different draft, you know? Anyway, that's what I do, 10, 12, 14, you just like blend between the lines, and I get the fit that I like. I've made this in this rayon spandex or viscose lycra like people call it this just reminds me of something electric like electric bolts going like thunderstorm I don't know it's a print that I saw and I loved <laughs> the design is really simple there with the gathers at the neckline and the arm size just finished with arm bands as is the neck the neck band and this is such an easy dress to make by now I mean I can whip these up really fast so I'm super happy about this one and before I try it on I want to show you another colorway I bought because when I like a print I usually get the other colorway if it's there and I can see it so it might not be to everyone's taste you know as always prints are but it is mine so I'm sharing this is the other one so it's exactly the same print only this one is in black gray and beige tones you know and this one has these other different toes with a navy blue back. Um, I'm not gonna make another Isidro dress with this. I just wanted to show you that I had two colorways out of interest. I actually know what I'm gonna make with this, but I'll tell you later. So the dress is very basic. It just fits really well and it's so easy to make. And I've got it above the knee where I like it. I usually would wear it with this. It's just a sleeveless cardigan that's super lightweight. Just the basic knit dress that fits really well and it's gonna be really handy for me. Close you can see the little gathering there. It works really well with rayon spandex. And I've got my vest on. That's how I would usually wear it, but I love this neckline. Don't you think this is starting to wear me? You've been raining down like hail on I have tried to give you my soul. I found this photo on Pinterest, I like the look, of course I'm not going to look like the model there, I never will, but I like the clothes that she's wearing and it's a jumpsuit and I can see there's a tie at the waist and the pants are sort of wide and they hit mid sheen sort of thing and I was inspired by that, I didn't want to recreate the same look. But the time that I saw this photo, I had just sewn the Sally jumpsuit and dress from Closet Case Patterns. I made the Sally dress in this amazing rayon spandex with lovely print. It was a big hit in my house, that dress. <laughs> my son loved it. I loved it. My husband loved it. And you know that pattern also has a jumpsuit there. And the pattern has two different bodices. One that I used for the dress has like a just a grown-on sleeve, you know, attached to the bodice of the skirt. 
and the jumpsuit has these white pants that are to the floor for length and the bodice can be with ties here on the top. I thought I'd try to recreate this look using this pattern but not as a jumpsuit, just as separate. It's much more versatile for me, I can wear these together and it sort of looks like a jumpsuit but then I can just wear them apart and being a black color, it'll just go with everything. You know, I've been loving black. I've always loved black. It's not a real color, but it's just so practical, you know? And the fabric I used is the same fabric I used to make my Rockford Raglan tee. And I mentioned in that video that I was using fabric saving cutting techniques so that I could have a lot of this left because I was planning to make more things with that fabric and I had just enough. Actually, I didn't have enough to make this. So I'll show you the top and I had to sacrifice something in the top but it's fine, it'll be fine. So on the front you have the texture of this fabric that you've already seen in my t-shirt and also on the cuffs and collar of my Lulu cardigan. So it's a fabric that has been stretched to its full capacity and <laughs> what I could get out of it. And I didn't line it, I just added on like a neckband there and these ties like binding. So I did modify the neckline, I didn't want it to be a v-neckline, I just softened that curve so I could apply a band in the traditional way there on the top. And the binding here is catching that raw area, going around the arm side and then the rest is just the ties here on the top. And I put a tie here to lengthen it because the bodice hits at a certain, like at the natural waist, I wanted it a bit longer. So I put a tie there and the process of attaching these ties here was the same that I've shown on the game day jersey from Love Notions. I did a tutorial there and showed. So I wasn't going to film that again because it was exactly the same thing. And I just attached this there. Now at the back, this is where I had to use another fabric. So you can see the back is just a normal uh, cotton lycra. Nothing special with the back. There's no texture there. But it's really fortunate that it's the same shade of black that I've used at the back and at the front. Sometimes you find black fabrics that aren't really the same. Well, I don't know how it shows up on camera, but in real life it looks the same, <laughs> so that's good. So yeah, that's what I did. Um, I really wanted to get the top out of the little tiny scraps I had left. And what I did with the pants was make the pants as usual eliminating that front pocket because the pattern has like a pocket there. I, I never do that. And what I did to the top of these pants was drop it by an inch because these are meant to hit at the natural waist because they attach to a bodice that makes up a jumpsuit, right? And I'm not making a jumpsuit. So I didn't want the pants to go all the way up because I wanted to attach a yoga waistband and that was gonna add the length that I took away when I dropped it an inch. So when I dropped it an inch and then added a yoga waistband that is wider than that, this sits high-waisted where I wanted it to sit because the top is sort of cropped, you know? I don't want to be showing my tummy at any time in my life at all. So I've done that, it's super easy make. Um, the legs, I just made them as long as the fabric would allow me and they hit sort of mid-shin like I wanted them to. Even if I wanted to make them full length, I didn't have enough. And the same as I did with the Rockford uh, Raglan tee, I just surged the edges and left them. So they've been surged and left there because this fabric is really bulky. If you fold it up and try to hem it, it's just going to look terrible. So this is a rare exception that I will do this. And the serger makes it really nice and neat at the bottom and it's black on black. So you can't really see. So super comfortable, These are, this outfit, secret pyjamas. I mean, I have been wearing this non-stop and I've worn it together, I've worn them separately, I've worn the pants with other things on top, I've worn these separately with other things and these two are just a great addition to my wardrobe and I'm glad I made them. I mean, that pattern, the Sally jumpsuit and dress is so versatile, I'm still not done with that pattern because there's the maxi skirt, there's so many options there. And I wanted to show you this fabric, this one, because I want to make another Sally dress with it. For this dress, I want to use this bodice with the straps at the shoulder and then add the skirt that comes with the pattern, short, you know, short. And that's what I want to do with this fabric. So that is a plan I hope to do 
pretty soon I would love to take this on holiday with me and I think it would go with everything and I'd wear it a lot during the summer. I'm talking about summer because that is my reality. I'm not in winter like most of you. <laughs> I am in the hot summer right now. This is my fake jumpsuit. I like the length of the pants right there. It's perfect. And when I walk, they flow really well. The fabric is thick but has a really nice drape. And the high-waisted yoga band is super comfortable up here. And the top goes right over it with the ties right there. Up closer, you can see this area here where the ties meet there, there's an area that doesn't have the ties in the middle so I can do a knot and that's how it looks. At the top, these ties have a little bow here and that's how they tie on the top. I did modify this neckline so it's not a V neckline so it's just sort of rounded and it was easier to put this band here and this binding there, I didn't want to line this because this fabric is really thick. So I really didn't need another layer there. It would have been easier to line it, believe me, but I didn't go that way. And there's always a way to modify things so that you can line or not line, depends on what suits for the fabric and the context and the weather and all those things, you know? Okay, and the last make is a Sienna Maker Jacket from Closet Case Patterns. I have already a video review about it. I was a pattern tester. During that pattern test, I made View C, which was a shorter version with a back vent at the back with buttons and a really cool sleeve with, you know, pockets right there. That's the version I made, but I always knew I wanted to make the other view. View A or B, I wasn't decided. And actually, the only difference between views A and B uh, is the length of the jacket, and that one has an open slit at the back, and the other one doesn't. Actually, it's the same pattern pieces, the same pockets, the same everything, you know? So I decided to make view A, which was the longer version, but it was an awkward length for me from what I could see and what I could measure. I wanted it longer, so I lengthened it by four inches, and now this is like a proper coat, you know, it hits mid knee and it's going to cover any dresses that I wear that are above the knee. I don't like wearing long coats where you can see a bit of the dress underneath. I, I really dislike that look. So for me, a jacket either has to be mid or high hip or long at mid, mid knee sort of level. That, that is my aesthetic, that's what I prefer, what I find most flattering for me. So if there's a jacket that is in between that length, I will either shorten it or lengthen it. And that's what I did with this one. And I chose a denim, no stretch, just your basic denim that I had to wash a few times before using it. It was so stiff. I washed it several times and I also washed it in Coca-Cola and it, it turned out very nice now, very soft. And when I was working with it, it was very nice to work with, you know? I filmed a full sew along for this, like really detailed step by step. Uh, for the Patreon ladies that are Orchid supporters, so they already got access to those videos and it's like It's like over two hours of video time separated into five parts. It was a mammoth of a job <laughs> but I really enjoyed it and Everything you know everything's included there in that so along. But I'm going to show you the details This one has an internal bust pocket that I used contrast fabric to match the binding that I used to finish the raw edges inside so you can put something in there. I actually would never put anything in here. I just did it because it was part of the pattern. And I use contrast cotton that matches this one. This pocket has been interfaced to add stability because the cotton is not that thick, you know. And I finished all the facings there with the bias binding. And the way I sewed on this pocket with, is with blue thread here so that it's not visible. Maybe you can see some stitching there, but it's mainly invisible. It's not a feature I wanted to highlight, like to have a pocket there, you know? Same as the facings, I did top stitch them down everywhere there, but you can't see it because I did it in blue <laughs> navy thread, so it's like the thread is hidden in the fabric, so you can't really see it. I'm really selective about what I want top stitch and what doesn't, because top stitching is really decorative, and that's where all your, your personal aesthetics come into play, you know? 
So all the collar, all this is top stitched. You can see that little W area there that is right, nice and fun to sew. <laughs> and this other small bust pocket has been top stitched down with the double row top stitching there. And okay, this this little opening there is really fun to sew. It's where the belt goes through. On the other side, it has a little facing there. I did decide to highlight this and top stitch it in the color so that you could see it because I think it's a cool feature. And on the other side, you have this little strap with the D rings, holds the belt together. Uh, I don't know where I got these two D rings, they were in my stash. I probably took them out of something I bought in the street markets in Bolivia and kept them there for a rainy day, you never know. And I had them or else I wouldn't have been able to make this jacket properly with this because I don't know where to buy this here, really. So that's what that has there. And then the deep hip pockets on each side and at the back. There's a huge slit, I'm gonna stand up. Big slit there. Has been top stitched down, it's super neat and it goes to the bottom. Now I also didn't top stitch the hem with contrast thread. I did it in navy so you can't see it. The same as the sleeves. I like hems to be nice and clean. And yeah, you can see the stitching line there in navy. I think it looks much better. Had I, you know, than if I'd done it in the golden thread. The center back seam has a row of top stitching on one side and on the other and inside. These have been folded under and it's super neat. Like there's no raw areas anywhere and the side seams have been surged and pressed open. That is my preference for side seams if possible. I like to press them open. They just look nicer and press better, you know. This is my Sienna jacket. You can see the length where it hits me and like this Presto tunic is the length I like in my dresses. It'll always cover the hem of dresses. So this is my preferred length. I lengthened it by four inches. And now this little thing here, this opening, I found it tricky to figure out what I needed to do. But basically this belt goes in through here. And you can wear it sort of just like that and then pass it through the D-rings. I think you can wear it like more open like that or this can go all the way around you, like that. And then close up here, there. So I think that's how it goes. <laughs> up closer you can see this little vet here opening for this belt. You can make it tighter. And the pockets there. And up here you can see how this collar hangs super well, this notched area right there and the top stitching, length of the sleeve. So that's how it fits and I love it. I'm gonna wear this a lot because it's denim, it just goes with everything and it's not that formal and it's a bit more dressed up. I don't know, I love it. I have tried to give you my soul, but you can't love something. I hope you enjoyed this video. I know I don't do these types of videos very often where I touch on a variety of topics, but I think the timing was right for this. I really wanted to talk about my grandma, uh, thank my Patreon supporters and talk to you about the plans and show you the make. So this video came to be. <laughs> thank you so much for watching. I will see you soon with another sewing video. Please like, subscribe and comment because I will reply and I will see you soon. Bye.